I'm going to tell you a little story. I defied death about, what was it, six months ago? Three months. Three months ago, I defied death. I'm going to put a couple of pictures up. I didn't want to show anyone. Hi everyone, welcome. Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How are you keeping? Today's video is going to be like a little walk around kind of thing, showing you the state of the workshop, showing you what we are up to at this point in time. Look, I'm doing the old Peter Millard arm here. Uh, that's what he does. Anyway, yeah, so what I'm going to be doing is showing you behind me, going to show you the work that we have got on. I'm showing you bits and pieces that we've got up to showing you how the workshop has evolved possibly from the last time you have seen it um got a bit of a abscess going on my mouth so apologies if you can't understand what i'm saying but anyway let's go through to the workshop i spin the camera around and um yeah i'll show you the state of the workshop at the moment this is what we've got at the moment we are a little bit flooded with materials Sean is on a couple of jobs at the moment. I'm not in here. I'm just in the office doing some designs and getting some more cutting lists. We are really busy at the moment. We've got about 10 large jobs on. So Sean is here on his own. He's got the bench to himself again and he's been working through um, some MDF and we've been getting a few batches of MDF at the moment. I went on Facebook Marketplace not long ago and I found the guy selling MDF. So this was up here not long ago and I got a whole batch, great deal. Uh, for some 18 and some six. So yeah, needed somewhere to put it and that's gone on the top. So from the green piece upwards, it was to about here. But other than that, yeah, we've been buying materials ourselves. So we got a few off cuts lying around. Sean, are those off cuts, those bits or? Yeah. Oh, they're off cuts. So we've been doing some jobs that have just taken half sheets. So it's annoying. It just means that we need to store all of this stuff. So they're awkward sizes that we are cutting up. The idea of buying so much materials is that material prices are going up massively what we used to do is we used to get Moran's to cut it up for us but then we just started having problems with them the cutting lists were out by a couple of mil here and there they didn't want to pay up they didn't want to send out new pieces Sean was then waiting on components and it was delaying us so last year or the year before it changed where we just started buying stock and the best way to buy stock is in bulk. A lot of this material was here, okay? So we had, can you see all of that is six mil? There was a hundred, how many sheets of six? 120. 120, and how many were stacked up over there? 120. I'm gonna tell you a little story. I defied death about, what was it, six months ago? Three months. Three months ago, I defied death. I'm gonna put a couple of pictures up. I didn't wanna show anyone what had happened but basically we had all the six mil stacked up where the 25 mil is here there we didn't have a bar at the top and we had the six mil stacked up and anyone who's worked with six mil knows it's floppy when it's in a full sheet not these particular pieces because they're small but we had so many so when we were stacking them up we were clamping them and we had them clamped with f clamps all those clamps over there i'm just holding them as a whole pack but we needed to get to them at one stage and yeah when we took the clamps off, they all started coming down and Sean and I were trying our hardest not to let them drop. But remember, there was 120 or hundreds or so. That wasn't there and the MDF was too about there. So all of that. And I worked out it was about 1.1 tons worth of MDF. And yeah, I was here. Sean was on the edge here and it was just going and it was going and going and we were panicking. I mean, and then it finally went without any warning. We were struggling to hold it up. And then if you have a look at the picture, the little triangle down the bottom is I managed to somehow survive in that little corner down at the bottom um, and came out. Well, I wouldn't say unscathed. My shoulder's a bit dodgy from it, but I survived. I mean, I should have died in that accident. Should I, Sean? How bad was it? You, yeah, yeah, you didn't. So when when it went down on me, you didn't see me or hear me, did you? No, I thought it crushed you. Yeah, Sean thought it crushed me, and um, oh my god, just thinking about it, it's giving me goosebumps. But anyway, stock. I'm talking about stock, and that lived here. We've got all of this now. We got that whole stack there. Well, that's a lot of eighteen and six, probably half half now, and then we've got a whole bundle of twenty five. And we've got some more 18 here. 
Um, we haven't got many 18 birches. We're keeping those for little jobs here and there, not bulk jobs, but just sort of a sheet here and there. I bought that back in the day of COVID time when I got like 60 quid a sheet. Now it's about 180 quid a sheet. Um, we've got sections over here. These are all our off cut sections and they come in really handy. Another one behind there. Um, small bits that are just too good to throw away. We always keep on top of the rack. So as you notice, most of the time when you see the workshop or the spray room, it's clean and tidy. As in like everything's got a place and everything's in a place. If you see mess, it's generally like a pile that's about to be sorted or needs to go away. The whole point of me talking about stock is so then we can just pick it up, use it whenever we want. And it's a lot, lot cheaper than buying it in singles. So if you know you're going to use it anyway, you're going to go through 50 sheets in the next couple of months. Why buy them in singles? A sheet of standard MDF is 30 odd quid now. If you buy it in bulk, you get it for about 21, 22. When I bought that whole bundle of 18 and 6, I got it for 350 and that should have worked out to be a thousand pounds. So buying it in stock and where, wherever the deals you can find, just snap them up when you can if you've got the space. Um, we don't use anything other than standard because um, we use the airless sprayers and we get a really good finish um, on the standard. So I don't bother going and buying Vinsa or moisture resistant unless I need to or there's a specific reason. So anyway, Sean's been um, doing all of this. There's a alcove. What's in here, Sean? A mixture of a lower alcove unit. Yeah. A l no upper alcove unit yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a wardrobe. Low, yeah. yeah, lower alcove units, two of them, and a wardrobe sections. So that's what Sean's been up to for the past couple of days, I believe. Um, we've got a bit of stock up there of 12 mil as well. So when we make shake style doors, we use 12 with six mil add-ons. Um, so Sean, generally, when he's he's on his own, he's cutting up materials. He just picks up a sheet out of there, puts it on the bench or out of there, puts it on the bench. We've got a cutting list here that I do for him. So these are already read, um, ready for him. Um, drawings are there. You know, we've got loads of drawings. So he picks up a job. If it's simple, he'll just go through this himself. If not, I'll make him a max cut um, design like this, which you're working through right now, aren't you? Yeah. So he's got six pages of this to work through. And then he'll just cut it up and put it in sections here. Um, so we're doing a cusk, one job for a customer, which is two low, low alcove units, two full-size alcove units, traditional style with all the moldings, and two wardrobes. Yeah. So that's what all of this is about and those pieces next door. So we're going to get through that. Sean machines it, then he brings it through once he's finished. So anything that is completed and had its edges done, um, the treated edges, and machine comes in here and it's ready for paint remember once i've sprayed it three coats in here um then it is ready to fit all right so back to the workshop so the mdf that you can see around is generally sean's bits and pieces we've got that door that needs to be fitted i had to we made a mistake on that door so um that has just been sitting there until i need to go and fit it in a week's time over here we've got a router table um in progress i was going to make a video of this um but i think it's a little bit too full on um for the router lift that you might have seen a couple of weeks back the trimmer router lift so i started making this video and then i was thinking oh it's a bit of a long-winded video so i've left that but i still probably will make that um and we've got a few bits over here we've got a router table that we use every now and then that's set up with our grooving bits to do the grooves no sorry the rebate bit that we use to rebate our drawers yep yeah. And this is our handmade one. So that's got the router lift for the trimmer and this fence. Great combo. Sean wanted to make this. He was impressed with this as well, weren't you? Yeah. I love this little thing. If you want to see plans of this, of how I built it, just have a look for this video. I'll leave a link in the description. There's also a video of how I made it. Bits and pieces that need places to go. These backings over here are going to be fitted um, next week. This is part of an alcove unit, pair of alcove units. Getting a bit of a mess here. We're getting off cuts, laying around everywhere. I need to come in here and sort them out. This job over here, that is part of the same job as next door, those backings. All this is gonna be fitted. These like light gray components are part of two contemporary looking alcove units fitted in St. Albans. So it's quite quiet in here, to be honest. We've just fitted two large jobs. Yeah, so we fitted 
a large wardrobe which we'll see you'll see up there and we fitted and a couple of wardrobes so let me see if i could put some pictures up but it was flooded around here with lots of work so it's nice to have the space back but as you can see we're getting more back these are all the backings sean's just cut up and this is the last couple of days he's just been machining and cutting components for yeah we get really busy but we do get through the work quite quickly um, a few weeks back, Sean made up this whole batch of six mil strips. Not sure if you saw a video on those or making the shake star doors, um, but we make up the strips and leave them in stock. There's a couple of hundred up there. So when we make the shake star doors, we just pull them off the rack. They have got their edges primed already. Great information there. If you are making shake star doors really quickly, you want to make them quickly. Um, looking around, this is our spray booth area here relatively clean and tidy um, always try and keep it as tidy or, or organized as possible we got um, yeah one of my buys recently was one of these ultrasonic cleaners and I've been testing it with a few different um, types of liquids like water white spirit WD-40 and all that sort of stuff to clean up parts and spray tips and so far it's doing a great little job Good little machine if you if you want if you like gadgets and you want to try and clean things this is a great little machine that one's set up with the white so i can just start spraying the undercoat for all of these mdf components soon okay so that'll get cleaned and that'll get used it's friday today so it's a couple of days before this video is going out yeah i mean it's coming to the end of the day so i'm not going to do any spraying now i've got a few emails to do but there's other bits here. I mean, we've got uh, an, an evolution chop saw here for cutting really heavy duty bits of metal. That's the model number. We've got a video coming out on this. Look at the size of these saw blades. 355 millimeter in diameter. It's nearly as big as my arm. Look, it's huge. Um, so that's to come. We made a video of this laser not long ago. So as you can see how this workshop works, I use something. It just sits there. Um, anyway. That's got to go in storage. I think Sean's going to have his break in a bit. Sean, are you waiting for me? Are you waiting for me? Ah, uh, oh, right. I thought you... You figure... Oh, you having your lunch? No, no, no. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this off. Ah, do you need a hand? Yeah, let me give you a hand. I'm going to pause the video to help Sean. Um, so he's going through this max cut now. And he's just working out. Well, the max cut is good because it shows you how to cut it up. What would you do? This long cut first in the middle first to split them in two. And then you'll start chopping off each yeah, side yeah, up. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Yeah, this this is a godsend. So if you are cutting up, I would recommend buying one. But I'll leave a link in the description for one of these. And it's a three meter track, but it just makes life so much easier. It really, really does. Um, along with the parallel guides. Do you not use the parallel guides? Uh, They've been in here for a while. It's a screw, it's a screw isn't it? Oh, you need me to get new screws. Ah, uh, these two that just round up, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's wobbling on you. Now you tell me about that. And I've got you. I've got you the screws. Yeah, 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 okay. Well, Sean usually usually uses the parallel guides on this one here and like one there, just to give him a perfect rip, especially if he's doing lots of rips. Oh, by the way, we've had a leak, and it's peeing me off because a year and a half ago we sorted the ceiling out, and the felt on the roof is leaking through the speaker. And as you can see, the, um, the plaster is just starting to sag. So um, I fixed the leak up the top and it's just catching the remaining drops. Um, anything else um, the viewers need to know, Sean? Um, Any news? Oh, we made a space for this, didn't we? Right. Tell me where you think that three meter track lives. Anyone? Any guesses? Anyone? No? Have a look at this. Oh, yes. Look at that little slot up there. That's quality. You need a ladder to get up there. This was all a mess. Basically, there was a leak there. I've only just finished fixing it and putting the ceiling back. And I looked up there and I was like, well, I had to take that strip off there, basically, to fix the leak. And it had revealed a little gap. I should know this because I built all of this anyway. Well, Sean and I did. It's a bit of cladding over the, the lintel. Um, but there's a gap there. And I was like, hmm. I could make use of that. So basically, that slot there houses our three meter track nice and safely because we used to put it underneath the bench. Um, but it was a bit long winded, never used, never went back. We are basically on track at the moment. We're doing all right. We've got this workshop and spray room how we like it. 
anything I would change, more space, always more space, even though you think this is quite long. Sean, how long is this workshop? Yeah, Sean. Oh, Sean, how do you know that? He just said 64 square meters, this whole workshop is. How long is it from wall to wall? Uh, this one is, it's about... So 17 meters long. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, so it's 17 meters long. This one's, how wide is this one? Six meters wide this is. So this is eight by six. Um, that one's a little bit narrower, but longer. Yeah, always more space. I'm buying more and more stuff and getting more and more bits to do videos with. Um, but I think it all works. I get a lot of questions from the fans and how I spray. I've done plenty of videos, but anyone who wants any links, just look in the video description, you'll see links to these. But I think it all works, basically. So basically, the materials come in, we stack it. I do the cutting list after I've got the job. I bring the cutting list in, Sean will we'll cut them up. He cuts them, he does the stacking technique where it prepares all the edges. And um, once all the edges are prepared, he'll work through the pack and machine them. And then once it's machined, it'll get dusted down and bought into the spray room. Okay, then once it's had its one coat, whether it's one-sided or two-sided, if it's two-sided, both faces obviously, it needs its prime, then it goes in back in. It gets sanded up with P240, dusted it down, then back in for its final two coats. And then it doesn't leave here until we're about to fit it, so nothing gets pre-assembled. What an absolute waste of time doing that. I used to do it. Stopped it after about six months assembling something just to take it back down again and put it together once it's in here like here These pieces they're ready to go. They go straight in the van to the customer's house and Then fitted So that is it. That's not too bad considering I've got an abscess in my mouth and it's killing me right now um, Sean's probably itching to crack on. No, saying that. Oh, it's nearly a break. Sean has breaks really late two o'clock jobs um, so Sean is going to have his break. What am I going to do? Um, don't know. Probably more emails. But if you want to know anything else about the workings of the workshop, you know, how I go about my daily routine of working, measuring up, drawings, in and out here, fitting, let me know. Anything you want to know, any other videos that you think um, you may want to know or I've missed out feel free to leave the comments, but please do leave comments and also like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers at the end of the year. Do you think that's possible? Um, Want to sort of give Peter Millard a run for his money. That would be nice. 240,000 subscribers. Come on, people. You can do it when you're being cute. And Jacob. Anyway, guys, have a great Sunday. I'll see you next Sunday. Take it easy. Ciao for now. Goodbye, Sean.